you coming online to listen to the word of God and to pray. I want to thank all of you. I see that we have 225 people on Zoom. We just want to thank God for all of you and we want to welcome you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the world has moved online and the ministry of the world has also moved online. And I want to encourage you with the ministry that you are doing online, that you are making good use of this space. May God bless you so much. Now, the message I want to share with you this morning is titled, Do Not Pray for These People. Do not pray for these people. Do not pray for these people. I would want us to read two texts from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 7, verse 16, and Jeremiah, chapter 11, verse 14. The Bible says in Jeremiah, chapter 7, verse 16, God speaking to Jeremiah says, So do not pray for these people, nor offer any plea or petition for them. Do not plead with me, for I will not listen to you. The message today is do not pray for these people. Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 14. Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 14. Again, God speaking to Jeremiah says, do not pray for these people or offer any plea or petition for them because I will not listen when they call to me in the time of their distress. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the clearest evidence that prayer does not change the will of God, which is critical for many of us to understand, particularly probably those who are newborn in the faith, they may think that by praying you can change the will of God. It is important to understand that prayer does not change the will of God. What God has determined to do, he will do regardless of how we pray. And God tells Jeremiah that do not pray for these people because what I will do, I will still do whether you pray or you don't pray. And God tells Jeremiah, I will not listen. God has resolved to punish the Israelites because of their sins. And he has resolved to punish them so that the future generation will be saved. This one said to be punished by all means, and that was God's will. And God tells Jeremiah that please do not pray for them to change my will, because I will not. Now, there are three things I want us to learn this morning. First, we learn that prayer must be according to God's will. That's why we must continually study the Bible. In studying the Bible and listening to lessons and sermons and messages, we get to know the will of God. And when we know the will of God and pray according to the will of God, all shall be well. But when we don't pray according to the will of God, we get in trouble. Because God will not answer that prayer. Regardless of how we pray, whether we fast, we cry, whether we use big words or small words, God will not answer. First, we learn that prayer must be according to God's will. And God tells Jeremiah, it is not my will to save these people at this time. They must go through punishment. And so he tells him, don't pray. Do not pray for these people. Prayer changes us to accept the will of God and the answer he will give. So whenever we pray, we seek to change ourselves and not to change God. Secondly, the proba when probation closes, prayer will be useless and ineffective. Israelites had been pleaded with by God several times to quit their sins that were now about to send them to captivity in Babylon. And they had not listened. And now probation has closed and the prayers are useless. And God tells Jeremiah, there is no need to pray at this point. Because even if you pray, you will change nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, probation will close for the entire universe someday very soon. We need to style up. We need to fix our houses. We need to put our life in order because when probation closes, there is no amount of praying that will change our fate. 
And that's why when God speaks to Jeremiah and says, do not pray for these people, it's too late. God has already determined they must go into punishment. The Bible says that God sent prophets, messengers, God pleaded with these people, but they did not listen until there was no remedy. And now that there is no remedy, God says they must be punished. And when we reach close of probation, no amount of praying will change the situation. By the time God says, do not pray for these people, he had patiently waited for reformation in vain. God didn't rush to this conclusion. God bore with his people, but they reached a point where they were not listening to him. I said three lessons. Thirdly, and of our concern today, is that prayer does not sub substitute what God expects us to do in order to get answers to prayer. We must play our part or forget about getting answers for our prayers. God had demanded that Israelites must reform their ways. They must change their sinful ways for him to answer their prayers. And as long as they had not done their part, God was not going to play his part. And God says, do not pray for these people because they have not played their part. They have not done what I expected them to do. Israelites were so sinful like we are. And they were now guilty of sin, but they were sinning without guilt. Israelites were so deep in sin that any favor from God would only support them in sinning. And so God demanded and still demands a total reformation of life. Prayer does not and cannot substitute the required reformation of life. There is what we do and what God does for a project to succeed. Prayer should not be used to make God do both parts. A student who refuses to study, but wants God to grant success, nothing like that. A farmer who sits at home doing nothing about the crop, doing nothing about the animals, but wants God to bless his or her farm. God says, do not pray for these people. Because if they cannot work on the farm, if they cannot work on their studies, God praying to God to bring answers to prayers will not bring any answer to prayer. And God tells Jeremiah, do not pray for these people. I expected reformation. And so far, there is no reformation. There is no use to imagine that praying will cause the reformation that they need when they are not willing to reform. And so there is what we must do. And there is what God can do. And God will not play our part. If we are not ready to play our part, then God says, do not pray for these people. They know what to do but they have refused to do it. And so God says, do not pray for these people. Prayer cannot substitute what must be done. I repeat that. If they do what they must, if they can't do what they must, if they refuse to do what they must, then God tells Jeremiah, do not pray for these people. Lepers were told to go and show themselves to priests when they sought healing from Jesus. And if they could not go to the priests to show themselves, then they will never get healed. If they are not willing to go to the priests, then the message is simple, do not pray for these people. Others were told to rise up and walk. Others were told to take up their mat and go. If they can't do that which Jesus expected them to do, then the message is simple, do not pray for these people. There is no use. Because if they cannot play their part, then there is no need for them to attempt praying because prayer will not play their part. There are times when God can do everything for a person, but there are times when God demands action on our side. If we refuse to act, God says to those who are praying for us, do not pray for these people. People who are praying for wealth, well, they want money and income, but have refused to stop exploiting others and stealing from governments and organizations. They don't pay their workers on time, though they have the money. God has a simple message. Do not pray for these people. People who want God to provide a perfect life partner, but they are engaged in constant adultery and fornication and are 
are not even willing to try to stop. God has a simple message. Do not pray for these people. Because they are defeating what God could do in their life. People who want happiness in marriage, but they can't forgive, they can't reconcile, they can't change the ways that are offending their partner. God says if they are not willing to do it, then do not pray for these people. Do not pray for these people. People who are praying for good help, but have never stopped contacting witches, witch doctors, and the likes, seeking assistance from demons, God has a simple message, do not pray for these people. People who, are, who do not attend worship, for example, and they don't even pray, but expect God's blessings. God says, do not pray for these people. If they have been invited to come to worship, they have opportunity to come to worship, but they have refused and they are expecting God to bless them, then the message is simple. Do not pray for these people. People who know the Sabbath and break it deliberately for their social purposes, for their business purposes, for their workplace purposes, for their studies purposes, and they know they are breaking the Sabbath, and then they are praying that God blesses whatever they are doing while breaking the Sabbath, God has a simple message. Do not pray for these people because they know what they ought to do, but they are not doing what they ought to do. People who cheat in exams and continue to do so because they passed exams and they expect to succeed in life. They will not succeed in life. So when they pray for success in life and they are cheating in exams, God has a simple message. Do not pray for these people. Don't waste time. A time comes, ladies and gentlemen, a point comes when more than prayer must be done because that is what God expects. He expects us to play our part more than just praying. Prayer does not substitute what must be done. Prayer does not substitute what must be done. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5, there was a case of incest in the church. And Apostle Paul says to the church in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5, that hand this man over to Satan for the destruction of flesh so that his spirit may be saved on the day of the Lord. Then again, Paul writing to Timothy, who was in the church in Ephesus, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 20, says, among them, are Hymenius and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan to be taught not to blaspheme. You see, friends, Paul says in the Corinthians letter that the physical suffering may shake the sinful brother back to his senses. Let the man who committed incest face the law and suffer physically, destruction of the flesh, flesh, suffer physically, and probably he will come back to his spiritual senses. Let Hymenius and Alexander suffer in Satan's hands that they may wake up spiritually and never blaspheme God. That's what he says, that let them go to the hands of Satan. Let them suffer. Do not pray to stop a painful process that may save a person's life. Some will get better spiritually if they lose their jobs. Others will get better spiritually if their health deteriorates. Others will get better spiritually when the family collapses. Others will get better spiritually when they are locked up in prison. Do not pray to prevent a painful process when sometimes the painful process may all that will trigger healing and salvation for this person. And so God tells Jeremiah, let these people go to Babylon. It's painful, they will suffer, but this is what is going to help them. You see, the prodigal son came to his senses after suffering in hunger in a pigsty. That pain was critical for his reformation. Israelites had through pain, caused pain to God. And now God says they must go through pain for them to wake up and realize the need of salvation. And so God tells Jeremiah, listen, do not pray for these people. Let them go through the pain so that this pain will assist them. Ladies and gentlemen, the message today is do not pray for these people loaded with lessons. I have a prayer, friends, that may God teach us to know his will, that we may pray according to it. May God help us to make the right decisions early before it's too late and probation closes. And indeed, prob probation will close when no prayer will ever be answered again. May God help us to know 
and do what he expects us to do, to play our part, what we must do to play our part. We must know our part and play our part as we pray. And finally, may God help us to accept and bear the pain that may trigger us to properly return to him. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your word. Sometimes it's shocking to hear you tell Jeremiah that do not pray for these people. But we realize that within it is very good intention because we have reached a point where we can no longer learn the other way, but only this way. We pray that we may take these lessons and we pray that you will bless us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.